Everybody, welcome back to What Elon Said, where we cover everything that Elon Musk says on Twitter, in interviews, and in presentations, or whatever commentary that he has. So today is March 22nd, 2022, and we'll jump into what Elon liked today. We've actually already covered his uh, what he said, so we're going to jump into his likes for the day. So first up here, we have a cool shot of what looks like some sort of residence built into almost like a volcano looking pit uh, from Archelect. So always count on Archelect for some cool looking visuals. And I think Elon just saw this and thought, maybe thought this looks a bit like something on Mars. So gave it a like. <laughs> maybe. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, here we have Gail. Uh, Alfar, just give a little, uh, little rem thing about Little X, hold the microphone. Yay, just a little uh, tidbit, I think, sort of just to get to attention. Yeah, got to give his little X some loving on Twitter. And yes. uh, I, I would play the audio, but there's really not much going on there. Just uh, baby babble and the crowd cheering. <laughs> That's it. Yes. That's yes. it. Um, next up, we have Ava Fox, who is covering a or tweeting about an article sure she probably wrote it about four tesla model y's that joined the police fleet in switzerland and we got a cool picture of a model y police car or polizzi uh, a swiss police car that's a tesla so looks pretty cool i didn't read the article did you catch up uh, i read some of it and uh they basically said that uh while it's expensive it's like uh, 60 something thousand per vehicle which is a bit for a police force um, but actually, I think they spend more on, on cars anyway, so they have to be retrofitted. Yeah. Uh, they mainly got it because um, it's just much cheaper to operate. There's no maintenance and there's no gas. So that was the big seller for them. And it could go damn fast. So yeah. it's pretty good. <laughs> I was going to say, fast as hell. Yeah. Uh, so it makes sense for the police because it's just, you know, those cars just go through the ringer and they need a lot of maintenance. So this uh, definitely makes sense. Let me ask you this. Do you ever go through Twitter like throughout the day and, you know, in your in your Tesla and Elon type streams, see something that you anticipate that Elon will like? Like he hasn't gotten around to it, but you're like, oh, I bet he's going to like that. <laughs> I swear I saw this <laughs> article yesterday, just just browsing <laughs> yes. and thought, uh, we'll see this. Tomorrow. yes there's something that's just calling for him to like like it's yeah. positive and something cool so he does i i, I do that does happen on yeah. occasion i'm not as savvy as you i think but i i do <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well you uh you talked about one web on our last call here and um here we have a little bit more detail here in a tweet that says, we're pleased to announce that we have entered into a launch agreement with spacex that will enable one web to resume satellite launches First launch with SpaceX is anticipated later this year. So I guess OneWeb was using um, Russian rockets to get up into space or to launch their satellites. That's and right. Now they'll be transitioning right. to Tesla. Or I made the same mistake you did. Well, yeah. They'll be transitioning to SpaceX. Yes. And it's uh, so they're going to use them. But uh, it's sort of interesting because I don't know everything about them, but it is sort of a competitor to Starlink. But this is such a need for it that, that you know they're separating it. So they're providing um, them transport. It's just another customer for SpaceX. So, mm. you know, they're just launching so many that they can they can take on more clients. Yeah. Which is um, weird so to take on a client that is essentially a competitor of one of your services. Yes. But I guess they view it as uh, a separate division. So maybe they have to say... We're not, even though you know SpaceX is, is the cargo company, Starlink is a communications company. They're really separate. Yeah. And it's technically, I would imagine that one day they're either going to be forced to, or they just will spin it off as a separate company. Mm. Okay. So you're saying that uh, SpaceX really can't even consider the fact that it may be competition to Starlink. Um, it's a... Fair offer 
uh, so, uh, yes. additional revenue. SpaceX, yeah. SpaceX is a transportation company. Starlink is their client in a way. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> that's how I see it. Yeah. I think that's um, an appropriate way so to look that's, at it. Uh, that's the doing. And, you know, they're doing the right thing right now to help them, but they can bring it up. I just think there's enough demand that they were going to go up anyway. So, yeah, you know, why not help them out? And yeah, uh, help them out with the situation of um, breaking ties with Russian space. Yes. Uh, efforts, so. That's right. Um, here we have just a little, uh, you know, uh, pat on the, patting on the back stat that Elon liked that uh, Elon Musk is now, uh, sorry, Elon Musk, Tesla has now surpassed Volkswagen as the largest EV brand in Norway. <laughs> so yeah, we, they've overtaken Norway. They might as well just hang it up now. It's all over that Norway is uh, number one. No, no other worlds to conquer. So they, it has beat the uh, golf. <laughs> yeah. Well, so it's, it's all of the, uh, I mean, the, it's the brand, right? Well, I know you can't one really that. see that very Gol well. But. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Um, yeah. There, there's about, Oh, no, the first more. registered one was the golf. Sorry about that. Yes. And then roaster. So there's a hundred more, so they, but it is the number one brand in Norway. So yeah. uh, that is uh, quite uh, impressive considering VW is close by, but that's uh, the, not, not close by, but mm. can easily deliver versus a Tesla these days. Now that Berlin is opening, they will provide much easier transport and probably lower the cost a little. So, yeah. Um, so we'll I see know. that. That's just like, you know, a congrats, basically. Yeah, it is. And he, he liked that. And he, he's always said that he loves Norway. It's somewhere yes. that I want to go. I mean, I, I know it gets a lot of attention for the EVs, and they seem to be at the forefront of adoption there. And and also looks like transitions to Teslas. Oh, um, huh. But I, I wonder about, you know, what's the population of the country? And um, I... You know, I don't know how, I guess their infrastructure of chargers must be pretty good too. So, um, yes, but anyway, Norway really leading the way, <laughs> leading the way with the transition to sustainable energy and now leading the way in terms of Tesla ownership. Yes. Maybe a sign of things to come for the rest of the world. All right. Uh, here we have Gal Alfar, Gail Alfar, who tweeted a picture here of, Starbase, SpaceX is epic. Starship will one day be unbelievably important in making us multiplanetary species. But uh, I, I do love this picture. I, I was blown away. That picture really struck me. Like when I saw that, I was like, that just looks crazy. Yeah. With the three of them lined up there as if it's just, you know, that really makes it look like this is real. And also at the same time, this is business as usual. We just have all yeah. our cargo ships lined up here, ready to go. Very cool. <laughs> I mean, they look so. like, like buildings, you know, it's, it's almost like a sky. No, like that, that, uh, like look at the building next can, to it. Like the, you can zoom in down here and see, you know, cranes and, or machinery and stuff. Yeah. And it's just monstrous compared to it. Yeah. It's, uh, and before, like uh, the, we were talking before, every satellite, every uh, uh, rocket before that, if you wanted to put one of those pieces of machinery in it, you really, that's all you could bring up, you know. Now it's just this fraction of the, uh, the capacity. Mm -hmm. that, that tractor would, bulldozer would bounce around in there if, if there was nothing else there. <laughs> <laughs> Rattle around. Rattling around. Um, so very cool. Looking forward to more and more scenes like this over the, the coming yeah. years. And and the other thing is, there's damn three of them now. Like, I remember seeing scenes of two. But these yeah. things seem to just be, like, multiplying. I know. They're, they're making them pretty quick. So many. <laughs> Fascinating. And here we have another Starship one. Starship could lift that in about five trips. So wait, this was related to what we covered in in the last episode here where he was talking about the um the rough math of the tonnage up to space that spacex is carrying compared to uh, the rest of the world really and uh Herr Simran Bansal or Simran 
Uh, says Starship could lift that in about five trips. If it only does one trip a day, it'll be able to transport the entire world's cargo demands to low Earth orbit in one week. Yeah. yeah. That's so insane. And then Elon liked that one, right? So yeah. uh, it's just that the, that tells me that that's their, their goal, just to be just, I don't know what the hell they're going to be throwing up there all the time that oh, we need all this cargo but i guess if, if this is sort of a case of if you build it they will come <laughs> i think so right i, mean, I, I know there's our... plans for space hotels and all these other all this other stuff uh, that's going to go up there we're we're currently our imagination almost is currently limited by the reality yes so what could happen when the reality changes significantly and we can bring up a lot more uh, I think we, you know, maybe, maybe it's not our, our imagination, but our ab abilities are limited by what we can bring up currently. Yes. Yeah. And that's our, why I wonder the, the first couple of years uh, that these are running, um, you know, granted, there's going to be some missions for NASA to the moon and uh, maybe there's plans for larger, a couple of larger transports, but outside of that, I don't know if the, uh, stuff is there that there's as much of a need of it for it in the first couple of years. Um, I know one thing that they want to do is send a lot of cargo to Mars ahead of time. Yep. Um, and that could use them, but who's paying for all that? Like what's, what, how, how's that being covered? Like that's going to cost a lot of money to just make all the stuff to put in there to go to Mars. Would that be a NASA joint mission to send stuff there there's really no fun economic advantage to sending tons of crap to mars i, I understand it's the objective of the company to have multi-planetary species but it just seems crazy i, <laughs> I mean spend, look you're money. gonna have to find um explorers entrepreneurs uh just space enthusiasts I, yeah, I'm sure if you threw it. up even just a like a, a GoFundMe or some sort of crowdfunding, um, you know, uh, approach, you could get a lot of space enthusiasts to donate. You yeah. probably get a billion space enthusiasts to donate one dollar, and next uh -huh. thing you know, you got companies that can you know are building stuff out with that money to take to Mars. Maybe Elon yeah. runs the whole thing because it's. Part of master plan part three. Maybe we'll Could be. Out. Yeah. There's just always intrigued. Like now that we have these, what uh what's lined up? What are they going to be shipping up there in the first couple of years with these yeah. this mega cargo stuff? So we'll see as it comes out. Hopefully the master plan part three will outline it and or uh a SpaceX annual report update. Yeah, they'll have so we'll to see be what like some subsections for Master Plan Part Three if it does involve colonization of Mars, because you're going to have to have like prioritize lists of materials that need to go there, right? Like you're saying, and then uh, what are the timelines for launches? And what are we bringing up at what what timelines? And who's paying for it? <laughs> yeah, I, that's the part I don't get, but we'll we'll see what they say. Um, I'm sure they've thought about it, but they just haven't said. Yeah. Um, we'll see. So here we have a very uh, interesting thing that I kind of question in ways. Uh, whole Mars catalog shows a chart that the cost, national average cost of gas versus um, electricity. So it's saying it's much cheaper to charge, you know, an electric car. But it says that the United States national average in 2022 is $14 to fill your car tank. That seems extremely low. Yeah. I mean, I, the, the, I would think it would be like at least $25 now. I mean, if for yeah, an I SUV, don't know what they're looking at there. That's a pretty SUV small today, tank. And it was uh, 60, uh, over $60. Today. Yeah. It was just, I've never seen that. Like it used to be like $35, $40 just the last year. Um, so it's interesting. So even at this price, it's much cheaper. But this sounds very wrong. <laughs> yeah. So, unless you're, everyone's loading up a, a uh, motorcycle. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Interesting. Um, it's, and it's not 
it's too high to be like a, a per gallon number. Yeah, it, I don't know what right. that is. It's a, he says the cost to fill up a car gas car. That's what he said. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, moving on. Yeah, moving on. Uh, we got Paul Kelly here. Shout out Irish flag model uh, three long range is an autobahn eating machine. Munich to rust in four hours with one thirty minute supercharge, easily doing one hundred and fifty kilometers per hour most of the way on autopilot. Epic road trip. Feeling like wow. that. Um, cool. As his landing in in Germany was underway. Yes. Um, and then here we have Austin Bernard saying, "I know I say it all the time, but my appreciation towards Elon and SpaceX is unfathomable. They changed my life and gave me something to believe in. I am forever grateful." So it's pretty cool there. I mean, I, yeah, you got to imagine that some of this stuff like goes to Elon's head. Um, when, yeah, yeah, yeah. but, but I also think he's just happy to hear, you know, optimistic things like that and that he's inspiring people. That's right. Um, it's positive impact on the world. Yeah. He's not liking the uh, complaints too much, but he does respond to complaints saying coming soon or things like that. So a little of both, a little of both. Yep. But, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think you and I would agree on this, that, um, he he is doing things that seem to create uh, hope for the future. Yes, aspirational person, yeah. aspirational uh, objectives for the company. So far on track. Nothing. I don't see anything too negative coming out of it. So it's a, it's good stuff. Way out, far out. The positives far outweigh any negatives that there might be, which I don't I don't personally see any, uh, except maybe blocking, seeing some stars at night in the sky. <laughs> Uh, so speaking of star blocking stars, Starlink is, uh, this is from, uh, Jared Isaacman, who is the individual who's personally financing the private, um, trips into space on SpaceX. He has a number, he did one last year, the first private citizen trip, three days in orbit, and he has a number planned in the future. He's helping one of these people that's helping finance these, uh, missions that no one would normally pay for. Uh, and, um, he has said that Starlink is so important and that COVID taught us the importance of connectivity for remote learning and telemedicine. So, uh, he's just thanking him that we have access and it, it's making such a difference in the world. And he said this because of a CNBC story about Starlink, um, it sees that in-flight internet market is ripe for an overhaul just changing the way people communicate left and right. And he's right because uh, in-flight internet sucks and is expensive and uh, it'll be nice for it to change. So that's maybe it's just offered to everyone for free or uh, it's just better. <laughs> Did you see the, the um, retweet from Kathy Wood yesterday that um, Zoom has a lower... P to E ratio than spam, like like the company that makes spam. Yeah. And so the question was, who do you think has a brighter future in five years, spam or Zoom? I mean, Zoom has just gotten pounded uh, since, I, the, since the peak of. Um, the only thing I'll say about that, that the Zoom thing has always been a question to me of how viable the company is because. Um, that of her, all our holdings, that's always been the one that I've always been a little suspicious of because it was very needed. It was amazing, but it's not like they're the only company that does that. Mm -hmm. So I kind of see it sort of like an AOL or a company that could easily disappear over time that they don't have, like everyone uses it right now, but it doesn't necessarily mean it will always be the default one. Um, yeah, I, I always thought wrong. it was right for acquisition from something like Google. I don't know what Google's uh, platform is for video streaming and conferencing, but um, I mean, Microsoft Teams is the first competitor that comes to mind. Yeah, I mean, Teams owns everything with, uh, I mean, Teams is amazing for corporations and then Salesforce you know, owns Slack now, um, but Slack doesn't have as much of the video component. I can see Zoom being 
taken mm-hmm. butt out, especially when the PE is lower. Um, I guess but, it's Google uh, Hangout, isn't it? Google Hangout is there, but the, it just seems like a technology that is very cool. Um, it was an iteration above what was there before. It's not like it's a new technology. There were many, you know, Skype, which, you know, is integrated into Teams. There's many out there yeah. and it could be. So that one, I hear what she's saying, but in a way, I think maybe spam will be <laughs> have more growth over time. I don't know. <laughs> maybe if, uh, you know, food supply chains get disrupted, maybe we are all <laughs> yes. eating spam. Hey, if the world's ending, you got to have some spam on the shelf to eat for a while. So that is not a hopeful future that I look forward to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But um, yeah, just coming back to Jared's tweet here, it's something that we've talked about a lot um, on this show previously that just ha- the, the whole situation in Ukraine and, and bringing Starlink there is really demonstrating uh, to me just how important communication and really like social media is becoming to, to just data and news consumption yes yeah. absolutely showing the fact the so it's it all right spidey elon fan is making another appearance here we got tesla model 3 surpassed the nissan leaf in early 2020 to become the world's best-selling electric car ever with more than 500,000 sold by march 2020 tesla became the first to produce one mile from 1 million EVs in March 2020, sales of the Model 3 passed the 1 million milestone in June 2021, the first EV to ever do so. So just some stats. Tesla stats yeah. for you with a, I don't know, kind of cool green looking car. I don't know. Yeah, I, I was going to say, have you ever car. seen this uh, color before? No. So I'm wondering if he likes the color or he likes the stats more. But <laughs> I don't know. wow, Spidey Elon fan is like a new account started in yes. February. And- Maybe this is Elon's secret account or something. Maybe he's his own fan. <laughs> uh, here we have uh, just more on the capacity of Starship. We have um, it's saying a single SpaceX Starship is designed to do in a day what all rockets on Earth currently do in a year. Not many fully understand the insane capacity of Starship, and it just shows rockets of the world and. I always like how they have the space shuttles in there um, as if it's just like another little rocket compared to the new ones. Um, Although, you know, it's, it's just amazing how it's going to be. I like the SLS is next to it and I can never tell. I actually, I think they have the same capacity, right? Who? The SLS and the uh, Starship. But the only thing with the SLS is that it's it's not reusable. <clears throat> so yeah. that's that's none a of these are. To it. Well, I guess the Falcons are. Uh, yeah, the Falcons are. But the space the SLS will you know that's going to be used for the whole moon mission. But it, uh, it it's only going to be used. It can't. It's not a long term solution. So I think SpaceX is the system that's going to bring people down to the moon and i think space sls is the one that's bringing everything to the space station they're going to have right so i think in the long term spacex will just replace them all Mm -hmm. and then i think there's under a contractual obligation to do the sls now but we shall see what happens in the end sls is out there now i think they rolled it out the other day and they're gonna they're gonna uh, hopefully they'll do the test soon but just everything's launched sls and spacex it's all happening at once it's amazing Mm -hmm. where is that launch going to occur down in florida down in florida yeah okay all right uh last couple here we have tesla silicon valley club with some inspirational elon talk Uh, success were less than 10 percent um quick clip and i just accepted that actually probably i would just lose lose everything um um yeah same with tesla what is this so about i'm, I'm not sure exceeding were extremely low oh a car uh, yeah just saying just, it's, it's just problems. saying that he looked um, at the probabilities of success and thought they were extremely low but um 
you know, felt that there was a chance, so he was going to go for it. Yeah. And committed. Less and... than a 10% chance of succeeding, he said. Yeah. So he's always given the statistics. Everything is like a uh, calculation. Yep. So it's always like a, one of those movies or TV shows, though, is the computer is always talking to them. There's a 5% chance left of succeeding. <laughs> The odds of that occurring are not. In our, <laughs> that's C three PO always says that stuff. Oh, yes, yes, that's right. That's his, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> He's always the the Debbie Downer of the situation. Elon three PO. Our odds are yes. not very good here. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, uh, so so we have the Silicon Valley Club. Another one. He loves liking them, but uh, they have a good fa- more talk about the uh, the X car. That the six seater is amazing because you get the van feel even at six two. Now we know how tall the Silicon Valley Club <laughs> man is. I can comfortably sit in the third row with feet having extra room in the middle. Okay. He didn't say that there was uh, anyone else in the row, but he does have uh, extra room there for his feet. So interesting. Yeah. Um, and I like how uh, Elon refers to the car as a variant. Huh? Yeah, instead <laughs> of that's my favorite there, model. There are times it's when just, I only want to offer variant. that variant. <laughs> um, all right, all so right. we got Giga Berlin we got Sunrise. I, this looks like it was maybe taken from Instagram or something, but uh, I don't. That looks to me like scenes from when they set up the festival that could be today the sunrise it could be morning. yeah so maybe maybe they'll have a bunch because of because they have the and... artwork up there so yeah. i don't know it's a cool shot there and then cool last shot we got we'll see what comes go ahead michael sheets saying master sun declines to get into the specifics about how the one web deal with spacex came out and Quotes, we're delighted. SpaceX stepped up and we appreciate that. More to our earlier discussion. Yeah, what does it mean? Declines. I don't know. I think it's just a positive thing. Yeah, I guess didn't want to get into the specifics, but yeah. I was happy about the agreement. Uh, uh, Masterson said that OneWeb doesn't have a demand problem. We have a fulfillment problem. So they just had to get it up there. So I think there's such a need for all these companies that it's uh, doing a lot. Well, I don't know whatever happened to um, Iridium because they have a lot of satellites too. I don't know about that service. So there's a couple of uh, competitors to Starlink and I'm just glad more and more of them are up there. Yeah. And lastly, here he says, OneWeb doesn't have a demand problem. We have a fulfillment problem. Yep. So that's what SpaceX is going to help with. All right, cool. Well, there you go. That catches us up for March 22nd today. Hope everyone enjoyed the show or shows. And if you did, please give us a like and subscribe and share. And hopefully the audio and video sounded all right in this. Yes. So we will leave it there until the next time. Talk to you later. Bye.